Well, it's 3 4 We're going to get started. Uh, it's Diane Plager for Online People. Um, we're the, I'm going to take over Charlie's duties until or and or if he arrives today. Uh, we will do the welcome. We'll go through the people here first at Selco, and then we'll meet our online people. Michael, right. you want to start? Uh, this is Michael Scott, Assistant Director for Selco. Donovan Lambright, Selco Automation Librarian. Uh, Tata Urban, Technology Support Librarian. Diane Plager, RPS. Brad Haugen, Lord. Ann Hutton, Selco and Cell. Peggy Hagner, Albert Lee. James Hill, Zambroda Public. Pat Johnson, Stewartville Public. And online we have Mary Kay Feltis, Owatonna Public Library alternate. Is Mary Kay our only one? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. And Mary Kay, this is Ann. At this point, until um, Ann Hokanson arrives, you are actually the elected member then, the voting member. All right. Sorry, Thank you. Oh, I think I can vote. <laughs> yep, <Hey, here. laughs> All right. Um, we have to approve the agenda. Diane, um, we need to make one change to the agenda. Um, okay. Ann Hokanson contacted us and asked that Aqua Browser modifications be taken off. She had suggested the topic, so that one needs to be removed. All right. Any uh, objections to that? Because it's an action item, there's no objections. We can just do that, correct? Yep. Okay. We will remove that from the agenda. Aqua Browser modifications is no longer part of our agenda today. Um, any other additions and or subtractions? All right. Um, all those in favor of uh, using the agenda as approved? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We will follow the agenda that's been given to us as stated. All right, we'll go to unfinished business. Input from online libraries. Anybody have anything they want to input? <clears throat> Um, this is Ann, and really it's sort of a general, just a general statement. Um, we had over 300 boxes that were picked up from the, by the weeding service, and immediately upon getting rid of truly um, boxes that were nearly to the ceiling, um, we have more. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm so excited that people are weeding, and I'm so excited that the service that Cheryl has um, made arrangements with, it seems to be working out. We call them, they come. Um, I believe that after they left here, they might have actually gone to Owatonna to pick up uh, material. Yeah. So, a good way to get things out of the library and to be repurposed. Yep. And they also had made a stop at uh, Rochester Public Schools, picked up two um, pallets that were wrapped. I don't know how many were in there, but... Wow, oh, that must have been from the warehouse, I bet. I think so. So not so much issues about li from libraries, but just some general in library information. Oh, that's great. That is awesome. Yeah, other than that, okay. anybody else have anything? Wow, cruising. All right, we'll move on. Uh, technology report by Dominic. Okay. It's a uh, fairly short list this time around. A um, couple of notes I want to make, though, on the online school libraries as community partners project. Um, we are on track with that. Um, there is a slight change, though. St. Charles School was scheduled to go live next Wednesday, but they actually went live today. Um, on Monday afternoon, their, the ILS that they've been using failed and their tech people don't think they're going to get it working again. So um, we kind of had a quick scramble. We had most of the work done. There was just a little bit left to be finished up, so we took care of that. And now they're up and using the system. They've got 94% of their circulation, or excuse me, of their collection rebarcoded, so they'll take care of the rest of it. And um, that's pretty much it. How out there this morning? Do you have anything to add? Uh, no, I just did the train, get things going, and it went well. 
So they are up and going, and uh, we're going to be producing some Sulco TV video on that in the next few days. Um, Glenville Emmons will go live on Tuesday, January 29th, and that is still on track as well. Uh, the other note I wanted to make um, concerns the WordPress upgrade. There was some changes to that project after this document had already gone out. Um, we had been trying to upgrade everybody's WordPress installations to the newest version, um, but we're having some persistent stability problems. That has been resolved, and we've now got that upgrade completed. I would be happy to take questions or comments on anything else on this list. If, if there aren't any questions, I'll add a, a one note, um, especially since it affects or has the potential to affect how much work can be done on the OCLC reclamation project and where it is that project may fall for your library depending upon where you are and the timeline that Cheryl created. Um, when we wrote that grant project, we wrote it for a 12-month project, October um, 1st through September 30th. Um, if, if you remember, we didn't receive notification until October 2nd, so then the official grant authorization notification, OGAN, was not received until November 9th. And no work or no funds to be expended before the OGAN is completed. So um, during that preparation time of this document, I had asked that the timeline reflect the 12 months that the commissioner had approved. And I was told verbally that that would be done, or no, I was told in email that that would be done. And then in the end, it was not. Um, later got verbal approval from Nancy Walton. And then I started inquiring as to how they were going to make this change, because you have a paper document and an email and a verbal approval that really don't constitute a legal authorization. After um, two written inquiries to the department and getting no response, nothing, not even that we're working on it, just zip, nothing, um, I started moving it up the ladder at the department to the head of the grants division. Within 45 minutes, I had a response saying that my inquiry had been referred to Washington, D.C. and to the IMLS. Wow. Um, I'm not sure why a decision on a, on a Minnesota allocation approved by the Minnesota Department of Education Commissioner has to be run through IMLS. Um, and in the end, if we have ten and a half months, we'll do ten and a half months worth of reclamation. But Cheryl and I are still hoping that we can do 12 months of reclamation because 12 months means just that many more records get touched and cleaned and site visits and it gives Cheryl more staff hours to put towards your project. So um, I'm working on it. Is this an addition to the last year or the last year? Yes, because the reclamation project that we started last year. Well, the, the reclamation project is probably going to be anywhere from three to four years, and we were going to pay for it with SOCO dollars. Okay. And then Cheryl That's took right. on the job right. of writing an LSTA grant with the idea that if we could hire an additional cataloger, gotcha. we could have more eyeballs and fingers, more eyeballs on records and more fingers on the keyboard to do cleanup. Now so this is, Sorry. this is a separate pot of federal dollars specifically to assist Cheryl and Becky in the, and all of you uh, in your reclamation project. So in addition to um, not in place of. So I'll keep you posted because, you know, obviously I'm, I'm looking for, Cheryl's looking for 12 months, not 10 and a half. And did they give you a timeline? No. <laughs> that's, that's yeah. so yeah. Presumably you'll keep
keep applying for this until the project's done, right? For the, you know, um, the next we will. The goal is to keep applying for it. Now, whether or not um, the state library will approve something in a second or third year, we don't know. Um, we've had to sometimes put a little different spin on it. So, for example, when we did the Chatfield Brass Band Library project, the first 15-month project was just we're going to catalog the stuff. In order to get that second year money, Michael had to put a, had to tweak the project to say we were going to focus on the BOA, which is their band and orchestra, which is band orchestra and, but they call it BOA. Um, <laughs> so we had to we had to we had to fine tune it, and I'm not sure what Cheryl. Um, I don't know how she'll try to do it, um, and if she can do it legitimately or not. Um, but certainly we'll try. What's, what's the plan if they, if you don't receive it in subsequent years? What are you going to do? Then we will go back to the original plan because we are still the the the, o, the LSTA project is only covering one person's salary. It's only covering one particular part of the project dealing with the unresolved bids that come in. The main work of the project is being handled by Telco and our employees here, namely Cheryl and Becky. Thank you. Tyler knows more than me. I wrote the thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, just a question, and I can't remember the order of what Cheryl had sent out. Is there any way, and, and just a thought as far as rewording this, because I know a lot of the schools went to the end of that line. Could there be something with um, curriculum that may help you with that grant to be able to? Ooh, that's really smiling faces at this side yeah. of the table. You know, connected some way with curriculum. How many libraries have been completed? Exactly. Um, whoever was in the pilot. Stewartville. Stewartville, yeah. Albert yeah. Lee. You are there, Austin. We're working on. And what about the product? Just about done. Just about done. Stewartville, yeah. I think, just finished their inventory, if I remember right. And does by chance, let's say, and does by chance Cheryl have an idea of, um, in the grand scheme of things, the percentage of the total collection of that with those, just those few libraries? No, but if we really want a, a detailed report, then we'll add that under other and I'll go get her. Okay. I, I'm just yeah. curious more so than anything else. Yeah. I think probably not, not the high percentage. You don't think that no, high? No. Okay. Because I would think it was just out at least completed. That's the only one. Well, and also, those are too large. Um, is it? Um, I don't remember. Sort of. Yeah. Sort of. Yeah, that's what I think. So, well, Otana will be sent shortly after the OCLC. So, yeah. And I don't think Red Wing needs to be done because they've been an OCLC partner. Yeah. Already. So. I was just curious, no more. Oh, and that's uh, 35 public libraries. Yeah, yeah. So that's only four, five. That's true. Okay. Um, All right. And that was with the, um, just for uh, Mayor Cave being online, we had three new, uh, three people come in to the meeting as we were discussing <laughs> technology. You guys want to see who we are? Sherry. Thank you. Um, Michelle Hi, Monica from Chatfield. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Any other parts of the technology that we need to discuss? Anybody? Okay. All right. Uh, going right from technology to staying really with technology, we're going to move on to new business. And the enterprise implementation. Um, there was a report in your packet on this. Um, I don't know if everyone's had a chance to read that. I can briefly recap what's in here, if that's what the group wants. I would like that, please. Okay. Um, we are moving forward with the enterprise implementation. Um, right now, we are in the process of creating a plan. And a lot of the details are still up in the air, but things are starting to take shape. Uh, we do not have a launch date yet, 
but there was a discussion last week at the users group meeting and there was a strong consensus to go live in August. Um, the feeling was, was that would get us past summer reading and would um, have the catalog up and running when the school media centers come back online. Um, I had some questions about whether that would be a problem for them coming into a new catalog, but the consensus seemed to be that that was actually easier to deal with than making the change after when everything is still busy. Is this a doable kit? It is. It is. Um, it's, it's very doable. Okay. So at this point, we're, we're sort of having our tentative target as sometime in August. Um, and we'll try and fill that in as we get a little closer to it. Um, I've got the team listed here on the report. Basically, it's our ILS team. Um, Tyler is serving as the project manager. So he's the one who's keeping the schedules and trying to make sure that the right people are doing the right things at the right time. Um, as far as the initial tasks go, the very first thing we need to do before we can do a whole lot else is an upgrade of Horizon. Um, in order to get on the newest version of Enterprise, which has full um, functionality from Horizon. So that is Horizon 7.5.2. Um, there are some other good reasons to get the upgrade done, but certainly Enterprise is the most pressing of them. So we have been working with Cersei Dynix to try and come up with a date. Most upgrades we can do ourselves, but they recommend that they be allowed to do this one because of, quote, known issues, unquote. <laughs> and I'm not sure exactly what that entails, but they are recommending that their staff do it. And that is fine. I am more than willing to let them do that. Um, the only fly in the ointment there is they work 8 to 5. They, they don't like to do these things during evening or weekend hours, um, which is, is a problem. Um, they are estimating four hours of downtime for the upgrade. And with my customary pessimism, I, I would recommend that we expect probably six to eight. So we are we have worked with them. Um, days, not oh, days, right? Oh, okay. oh. <laughs> We've worked with them. Um, <laughs> they will do an evening or weekend if we pay extra for it. So um, we have Friday works great for me. Actually, we, we've got it set up to do it on a Saturday night. Is what we're going to do, and they will do that for for an additional Good. fee, which we're we're going to do. Um, so that has been scheduled for February 23rd. And that had not been set when this document was sent out. So this is fairly new information. So Saturday night, February 23rd, at about 6 o'clock in the evening, we're going to be taking Horizon down. And um, we'll be here in the office working with them while they do the upgrade remotely. Um, there's also a HIP upgrade that goes along with that. So, um, so that's going to be happening then. The next other step for us is to get our staff into enterprise administration training. And really, they want us to do that before we do a whole lot else. Um, Tyler is working on getting that set up. Um, we'll have several members of our team attending that. That is online training, so we won't have to travel anywhere. Um, and hopefully, that will be going on in the next month or so. Once we get through that training, then we have to perform configuration and profiling, which basically means filling in a whole lot of forms, uh, information on each of the online libraries, information on Selco, um, decisions on themes, and basic layout, and a whole lot of that kind of stuff. And that's not the kind of thing we can really do until we've had this training, so we have a better idea of what is possible. We can only learn so much looking at other catalogs. Um, do you see, this Diane, do you see a lot of um, canned similarities when you've looked at other people who have it? There's a basic layout. Okay. There is. Um, and since we've got a fairly short agenda, I did bring up some catalogs. And if we have time, which I think we will, we can certainly take a look at some of those. Yeah, I would like and, to. And you can sort of get a feel for that. This is going to be as arduous as Aqua Browser. I don't think so, because with Aqua Browser, we were moving from a traditional library catalog to a next generation catalog, if you will. And and that was a pretty big wrenching change. And it involved making a lot of decisions that we had never really had to think about. Enterprise is of the same mold as Aqua Browser. Um, so we're still going to have to double click to see if it's there? Um, that's something we'll have to, to figure out. But what I mean is that it's still going to be a catalog that uses facets to allow people to drill down. It still works on that general concept. So a lot of the thought 
and, and thinking that we had to do for Opera Browser should apply here. But Enterprise certainly brings a lot of new things. Otherwise, we wouldn't be moving to it. Question. For, um, just, just thought, for kids who have built like lists, and other patrons obviously, who have built lists of what they like, what they don't like, this, read this, boy book, girl book, blah, blah, blah. I'm assuming none of that will be transferable and lists will disappear? Well, my hope is that we'll be able to export that information and oh, import okay. it in. But I have not gotten confirmation from, from Cersei Dynex or Apple Browser that that's possible. Okay. So I'm not promising that yet, but certainly that's what we want to have happen. We don't want to lose any of that data. Okay. Um, the only reason I'm concerned is that um, Aqua Browser, the way that works, it, is it cuts across all Aqua Browser customers. So it's not like there's just a list of cell phone patrons with their lists in a database someplace. It's part of a much larger database, and patrons don't have to identify what library they're with because it's treated as an online service. If you go into My Discoveries, which is where the lists are yeah. kept. Oh, you're right. That's a whole so thing. I'm not confident that we're going to be able to pull that out. Okay. But I haven't asked yet. So um, at this point, I'm not willing to say either way. But it would be best if we could pull that data out and bring it with us. The alternative, if that doesn't work, is that we'll, several months ahead of time, we'll want to put something up in Opera Browser saying, hey, do you use my lists? If so, we're moving. You better get your information out, and here's where you'll need to put it, or something along those lines, and then make people do that. Okay. That's by far the least attractive of the options, but that's probably what we'll do if we can't export it. Um, it would probably be useful for the schools if that yeah. happened like, by early May. Yeah, yeah so the kids can take it out. That's what I was Most thinking, definitely. too. Most definitely. And, and that should work. Um, that, that should not be a problem. Um, once we get the profiling documents created, then they will create our instance of the catalog. We are not hosting that here, so it's not like we have to set up a server or anything. They'll be installing it on a server in their server farm. So the rough outline that they've given us so far basically has them having our catalog installed and running by the end of March, with then lots and lots and lots of tweaking to be done. So. That's why I'm, I'm fairly confident when I say by the end of March, we should pretty well know whether we're going to be able to pull this data or not, which hopefully gives you time to work with the students. Yeah, that will help. Thanks. Yeah. So the, the, the rough idea right now is that by the end of March, we'll have a rough version of it up. You, know, you can call it version one, if you will. And then we will have May and the summer to let people look at that. We'll, we'll have it set up with some kind of restricted access so that only online library staff can get to it. We don't want the public looking at it. But we'll have that set up so that through May and June and into July, we can be getting feedback and making changes and, and sort of tweaking things and then go live in uh, August. I want to try and incorporate some usability testing on this. We, we did a little of that with Aqua Browser, but I think we probably need to try and do more if we can. Um, testing with both library staff as well as patrons. Exactly how we're going to do that we'll need to, to talk about, but we've been doing a lot of usability testing on the Selco website, and that process has been working pretty well, so we would probably do some kind of streamlined version of that. Okay. So that's the basic process as we're looking at it right now. Like I said, there's a lot of details yet to be fleshed out, but that's kind of where it looks like we're going. So the big question I've got, well, I'll just stop there for a minute, and then I'll ask my big question. Um, I'll stop for questions and comments. Uh, you foresee, a question I have is, you know, we spent quite a bit of time as far as talking about it, and Peggy's question was a valid one regarding, you know, how much it's going to take. Do you foresee another group being formed to do some of that again? That's kind of my big question, actually. Oh, so okay. yeah, you're, you're thinking right where I am. Um, we did pretty painstaking work last time around. <laughs> Maybe with the emphasis on pain. Um, looking through specifically the fields in the MARC record, um, what we wanted to have displayed, where we wanted to have it displayed. We didn't get everything that we wanted, and we didn't always agree, but we did sort of have a consensus. Um, and how things searched. My thought, my hope, and I want to hear what you think of this, is that for version one anyway, we'll just bring those same decisions over and see what it looks like. 
And then in that tweaking feedback period, we can start to make adjustments if, if we feel like, look, look, what worked in Aqua Browser isn't working here, so let's change it. That's an excellent idea. So, so that was my thought there. But the bigger question is um, getting feedback and, and getting input from the group. Last time we had an Aqua Browser committee, and it was a big committee, and it was it, it did its job, and it worked pretty well, but it did involve a lot of time and effort, a lot of travel for everyone on the committee. So my question is, do we do that again? Or would it be possible to do this leveraging these meetings where ILS operations and technology policy is getting together? We have one users group meeting in there. Um, we could probably schedule a second one if we felt like we needed to. I think we did that last time with Aqua Browser, if I remember right. Um, and then that plus having it up online where people can see it and send us feedback, whether that's sufficient mechanism for getting input, or whether we need to have a committee. And to me, let's get it up and look at it first and see how much tweaking we think is going to be necessary. If it's not a lot, I would just soon do it here. I mean, if we find out there are multiple things that we have to change or think about, then we need to maybe rethink of what we're going to do. But initially, why don't we just start out with baby steps? Do it, look at it, see what we think, and and only go. <laughs> yes, necessary. If we, if absolutely necessary. Yes. Yeah. And if things that we feel like that can't be resolved within this group, so. I think this group can do a good job of, you know, bringing your thoughts to the discussion and then soliciting input from your peers. Well, I think it would have it up on for them to look at. It's right. their obligation to send their thoughts to us. Right. And maybe solicit is too hard to work, uh, harsh a word or too, uh, too task oriented. It might just be a gentle reminder periodically to say, if you have any, if you have any problems, now speak now or forget okay. it. Right. Yeah. So sort of like posting that thing. Well, but if, but if there is a user's group meeting in there, too, that's just yeah. what happens I mean, we, we've yeah. got one in May for sure. And in the past, we have scheduled one in March when we're doing a special thing like this. So if we felt like we needed to, we could. I don't know that I'll have the whole thing to show in March is the issue there. Uh, my, my, I was thinking about various ways online of getting feedback, but I'm starting to think now the best thing to do is just rely on email because everyone knows how to use it and it's simple. I mean, we could set up some convoluted forum system or, you know, vote on what you think or whatever, but that probably just makes it more complicated. Uh, is, this a, uh, I don't, is this becoming an action item that would need to be adjusted with our, or does that need to be an action item regarding moving forward and saying we're just going to kind of wait or we don't even have to, it's just partly discussion, just for minutes end or committee. I don't I know the answer to that. I, really I was looking at it as just discussion. feedback at this point. Okay. I'm fine with that. I I'm, I'm comfortable sure. with that. Yeah. Not. There's a variety of ways to get a hold of you very easily and very quickly if we needed to make some type of radical shift in our time frame. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, so that's pretty much it. The only other thing is that we will be doing training um, for online library staff as well. We'll need to work out the details of that. Um, I would presume that it will probably be some combination of some formal sessions here along with online video and road shows, um, probably. But so we will make sure that there's training ahead of time. And I think the one big thing from Aqua Browser that I want to make sure and do differently is when we did patron testing with Aqua Browser, we weren't 100% ready. There were some functions that were not working yet, and I think that came back later and bit us pretty good. Um, so we're going to try really hard this time to make sure that the thing is feature complete and that there's nothing on there that we have to tell people, assume this will work. <laughs> uh, I'll just say in one more time. Oh, in my top concept. Oh, Aqua Browser. Um, so they're aware that we're going to be leaving their contract then? Not yet. Okay. We don't we don't have a contract with them that we have to give them a lot of okay. warning basically. Um, Amy looked into that for us and we really don't have to tell I think them it's a just lot. a thirty day notice. Yeah, pretty much. Oh wow. Yeah. And it's just a maintenance 
it's just a maintenance contract at this point. They're not providing. I mean, we're hosting the thing here on our own server. So um, at some point, I may ha I will have to talk to them about exporting patron lists from my discoveries, and then the jig will be up. And how much they will want to cooperate with us on that is kind right. of an open question. That, that actually that led into my question. Yeah. I mean, the other question I have with them is, does they see, you know, a good business would say, why are you leaving? I would be curious as to if that happens. I would hope they'll ask. I, I would hope to. I'm, I, this is Ann. I'm going to guess that they almost don't care. First off, okay. our maintenance contract with them is $1,700 a year. Oh. So we are not a huge thing? amount of income for serial oh. pollution. So that's, that's the first one. They've already made their money off of it. They've made our, their money off of us when we made that $100,000 purchase. Um, the other thing is that every single time we've gone to them asking for when are you going to add this enhancement, mm -hmm. which in today's world, let's face it, mobile access isn't an enhancement, it's pretty basic. It's not even on their to-do list. So if they tell us, if they were to ask us, we're, we have this whole big long list of here's all the things we've been asking for that you're not working on. Right. Um, right. But I don't think that they are interested yeah. in keeping us or they would have started working on any <laughs> one of these things, so okay. we would have been a little happier. So I'll be surprised if they even ask. Oh. Yeah, and, and I, I agree. Uh, the sense we get is that the platform is pretty stable and isn't going to change a whole lot, which is just another way of saying it's kind of dying. Was um, the cost of this new one included in the upgrade, or is it an additional charge? Um, it is an additional charge, additional. but it is, um, it was pretty low. I think it was 13. Fifteen thousand. That sounds about right. And that was for the first year cost for the installation, and then the price bumped up to like sixteen five because one of the supplemental options is ebook. Oh. The ERC, the Electronic you. Resource Center. And Although we're supposed to have that in year one. Right, but I'm saying it, it was an additional price. Right. Because I had to sign a separate right. Right. Uh, price quote for that. Right. We purchased that too. Okay. So we're looking at less than twenty thousand dollars, Peggy, for the for the um, price, and then everything in the Cersei Dynamics world, except for Horizon itself, has an ongoing maintenance fee of three thousand dollars. So I mean, you can. It just, it just never changes. Yeah. Well, that may be good in some aspects. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, Serial Solutions has developed their own next generation catalog, which is sort of competing with Aqua Browser, which I think is just another red flag that, that Aqua Browser is probably going away. Now, you have to understand, Aqua Browser has kind of an interesting way they work. They're a European company. Uh, you know, they're headquartered in the Netherlands, and they have a very strong presence in Europe. And, and some other parts of the world. They don't actually do business themselves here as Aqua Browser. You know, I talk about talking to Aqua Browser, but in reality I'm talking to Serial Solutions, which is sort of the U.S. Um, distributor for Aqua Browser. And so I think Serial Solutions is sort of phasing Aqua Browser out of the U.S. market in favor of something they want to develop on their own. I have no doubt Aqua Browser will stay strong in Europe, and maybe there's even development going on in Europe. but not in the U.S. So if Aqua Browser was originally designed for standalone libraries. It was never really designed for regional consortia. Right. They they came out with another version of the catalog for consortia, which is the one that we're using. And it, it sort of works, but nothing really has been added to it either. Are there any other questions regarding enterprise or comments? Um, I would like to suggest, Andrew, I don't know how I do this, that um, Dwight, Dwight, at school, sorry, Donovan. Um, Donovan, show us or present that now before we go to the other two agenda items, which are virtually ending our meeting. <laughs> sure, hurry, <laughs> Ann. <laughs> um, so you'll start to see some uh, similarities here as we go through. Um, this is the um, South Australian library system. Um, which was suggested to us as a really good analog for Selco. Um, they are very similar to us in that they are a large regional consortia. 
they have lots of libraries that are independent. They're not branches. And I don't know how big I can make this without so losing something. I'll try. Much better. Even that. So if you can make it out over on the side, these are their libraries. And they have not implemented this yet at all their libraries. They're, they're still in the process of bringing libraries up on the system. But they do have all of these. So what you see here is the basic um, out-of-the-box look that Enterprise brings. You have a banner up here, and every library can have their own banner. It's going to be very similar to what we've got right now with Aqua Browser. Um, but there's a consortial logo over here, so that's very similar to what we've been doing. Um, you have a search bar, which by default appears up here. And pretty much all the libraries I've looked at online have stuck with that. So I'm not sure how changeable that is. And then down here, you've got a central pane, which is where search results will appear. Um, on the title page, though, they've got some um, widgets or something up here that are tied into various um, bestseller lists. Um, on the American one, the New York Times bestseller list is prominent on here, but you can also see new materials, which appear as sort of a scrolling title uh, cover art kind of thing, and then you can click these and go to them. When, like I said, when we get to the American catalogs, we'll see that the New York Times bestseller list is, is used to populate that. I know they have some other data sources that they can make available to us as well. And then there are a couple of sidebars which are used in a lot of different ways by different libraries. Um, you can put basically whatever graphics, text, or hyperlinks in here that you want to. And as you'll see in a moment, different libraries have used this in different ways. So this is the consortial catalog but they have given each of their libraries a profile <coughs> which follows the same basic outline or basic layout. Each library has been allowed to pick their own theme, so you'll see different colors and, and graphics on here. And they've been given some freedom in how they use these side banners, or uh, sidebars, excuse me. So this is what Adelaide did, Border Town, now, as, I go in, as you go into these, am I just then searching that particular catalog for that particular? Um, they have it set up so you're searching the entire consortia. Okay. But I, I believe it is possible to set it so you're searching just that library. Okay. That's one of my questions. The documentation sort of implies that you can, but I haven't talked to them yet. That would be huge. Okay. Because if they look on there, well, it says it's here. They're mm -hmm. not going to look to see what library is that. Right. So that is that is a really big thing. So if we search um, this library, I'm not sure what a good Australian search would be. We'll try kangaroo. <laughs> then you see some, some results here. So I think I'll look at one of the U.S. catalogs to really start looking for the results. I think it will give you a better idea. Okay. Um, but, but that is how it works. So. I don't know if you can default to that, but I did see it where you could select the library if you want to search. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but more than one? Yeah. Wow. So you get to to the different ones. And they do have that set up as part of the drill down. And that's not unlike what we have here. Right. Now you'll see that the order of the facets can be changed, and that's different from library to library. So I guess the main point I wanted to get across with looking at these um, Australian ones is they've, they've kept the same basic layout for all the libraries, but they've allowed the libraries some choices on themes, you know, colors and banners and things like that. Uh, I have a question. Since this is an or a Seriously Dynamics product, when you do your login or your My Account, are we gonna? Is it gonna be the same? Like, we, you know, we don't have the discovery thing separate because it's a different vendor. Um, that is my understanding. Is that it should be incorporated, 
Um, it won't be appearing as a separate page or anything like that. Now, how they hand, it, but that's for the horizon information. So what do I have checked out? What are my fines and fees? What are my requests? Things like that. Um, how they handle the more social media aspects of it um, is going to depend on what product you're using for that. I know a lot of these are using library thing for libraries. So there is some, some separate add-ons that you can decide to do or not do. And we haven't really explored that yet. Well, I'm thinking, you know, because like in the, the IPAC, there was uh, when you added titles to your list, and then it was the same single sign-in. Oh, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, and my understanding is that the lists are handled the same way as the My Account information. So when you go into My Account, you'll have what you have checked out, your lists, things like that. So it'll be back to more of a single sign-in. Okay. That's, That's correct. correct. Okay, so I'm going to move on. Actually, I'm going to go on to this one. Um, Frisco Public Library, this is a standalone library, so um, you're not going to see much about consortial features here, but this is a good one um, to see some of the details of how how it all works. They have modified, they've actually created, yeah. They've actually built a website around this and have created a search bar right here. So you can see they've done much the same thing. I like that being able to change my view. That's nice. Oh, right here? Yeah. Yep, you have some options there. Or they have this kind of strange thing. I think this is sort of their version of the cloud thing in Aqua Browser. Um, I use kind of a strange looking thing that may or may not be useful. Nope. There it goes. <laughs> not very easy. Probably not. So you can move around with your mouse. I'm not sure exactly and what if it is the <laughs> purpose of this is, but it's it looks cool. cool. It looks cool. Right. <laughs> I think that's as fun as it is. All I can see is some of my senior patients trying to, well, figure out this, can't figure out why they won't stay still long enough for them to click on it. But the, the, by default, it appears as the uh, list view, which but is... But isn't there one of those things like, you know, if you're on a game with your iPad yeah. and your... I think that's what they're trying to they're emulate, trying to yeah. Simulate? I think so. I think so. Well, I don't either. <laughs> I just seen it on the app. I don't know why I've even seen it. <laughs> Um, one thing that this library has not incorporated, but I have seen it at others, and I want to make sure to point it out, is uh, the ability to limit your search to things only that are available. I, would I, love that. That. I know that that's part of the out of the box, and I'm not seeing it here, but I do know it's available because I've seen it in other places. Um, so I think that's kind of a neat feature. Um, all the catalogs I've seen so far have the same basic model where you get a search results list and then you do have to click the title to get the more information. Yeah, that's what you were asking about. Yeah, before. really. But, you know, the old one that we had before, you know, it always lets you know if it's available or not available. by looking at that first sheet without having to click into the record to find out. Um, so, I like the layering in here, too. That's nice. Um, me changing the size of the screen is kind of goofing things up a little bit, so I don't know if you're getting the full impact of this or not. <clears throat> but rather than open that in a new page or something like that, it opens it as kind of this pop-up window where you can then get information. And I'm having a little trouble scrolling here. Um, information on the, on the title, the availability, and then this accordion style display or any information that you've got through Syndetics or Chili Fresh or, or whoever, we're using Syndetics. So I have a question about the availability. Um, you know, this is obviously more of a concern in some pro than maybe in some other libraries, but it, will we pop up to the top like we are in Aqua Browser or is it going to be alphabetical? That's a good question. I don't know that yet. Oh, okay. so there's, 
30 from libraries for us, that's a, yeah, obviously a thing. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that yet. I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll really don't have to worry about it. I'm okay. Triple A's and Broadway. Okay, today. All you need to do is find somebody with a, you know, a glass. Yeah. Um, used to be a I'll work on that donor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some of the names. Aaron, they can just donate to the library. Or you can just put ones in Broden. That always comes to the job. What are you going to do about Ford Moore? It's always going to be in the middle of the list or Rochester. Not if you have that one. Then you're right up there, right? Okay. Oh. No. I'm trying okay. to find a title in Australia here that would maybe work like that. Fifty Shades of Grey probably isn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I kind of like seeing an American catalog that's a consortium. Well, yeah, they haven't really given me a good consortial one. Oh, okay. This was their best example. <laughs> yeah, I know. I put Fifty Shades of Grey and it, it didn't come up at all. So. Try <laughs> Possum Magic. That's an Australian children's book. Okay. Or hide. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Laptop issues here. Well, let me have this. Just click on the outside of it. Yeah, it wasn't working for some reason. I think by tweaking the size a lot, I kind of screwed it up. Oh, if you need to make it taller, go ahead. Do it. That's fine. You make All right. Awesome magic, you said? Yeah. Is that with a P or an O? <laughs> <laughs> Two copies. Look at one of the 1991 ones, because that's what it is. Hey. Now I see in the past, but I, what are the movie screens? That just hasn't filled in yet. I'm sorry? Oh, when you were showing that, is the cover or whatever looks odd. Uh, those would be... Uh, Big records that don't have any. Color. Oh, okay. I can't. I just can't see what else. Okay, with them. So this library does not look like they have a copy of that. I'm gonna make this a little They're smaller. Yeah. But if you hit on libraries, does it become alphabetical? No. So you can sort it that way. Again. All the way up there. Oh, you can. Yeah. Rocking. And look, you can reverse it, James. I know. Okay. <laughs> and then you can just hold it right there. Not right. bad. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't really answer. No, when you get reference questions, <laughs> how it really works here. But since I, I didn't see Border Town in that list, that doesn't really answer um, the question about whether your library can be made to appear first on the list. So, yeah, um, do Ruins of Gorland. Yeah. That's the first one. Well, Ruins of what? Gorley. O R L A M. Yep. No D. Let's see if your spell check works. No, it's fine. All right, I'll see if I can find one that has lots of available copies here. <laughs> does this one have a spell check feature, and does it work better than Aqua Browser? Well, it figured out what I really. Well, it asked, did I mean this, or it did pull up what I really wanted, even though I didn't type it right. I know you can't really see that because it's too small. Okay, good. I put, I put a D on there, and it, it figured out that's not really what I meant. It did also ask me if I wanted this very similar title. Good. Uh, so, yeah, we're not really finding the answer to that question. So that's obviously something in Aqua Browser we have right now that we're going to want to try and keep. So. We will have to find out about it listing your library first. Let me go over to the American one. Let's see here. 
And just for a moment, I'm going to put this back to normal size, see if this display works a little better. Am I missing it where the my accounts is or anything? Is that was that there? Or did uh, that is right up here. Ah, thank you. And this has been pretty standard on all the ones I've seen where you have my account, my list, library information. Okay. Um, there's an ADA mode, which I think is just the text version. Do I misspell gray? E Y. It's A Y. No. Well, I didn't the book is E Y. Oh. Well, either way, it didn't point anything out, so maybe it's you know, just a little more elevated than that. I don't know. Um, you haven't felt it as much. No. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> what if you, uh, what if you typed out 50 or the, is it spelled with five zero or is it uh, F-I-F-T-Y? I think it's F-I-F. It is don't like it. <laughs> it is. It is spelled oh. out here. There you go. Uh, I think well, my glasses don't be that far. Uh, yeah, it's not, it's not there, though. Yeah. No one's admitting to the hardware channel. They have it. Yeah, there you go. Finding it, Michael. Yep. I just started typing F by F, and it brings it up. Found Gets it to fill out fifty. The options pop up as you do it, Michael. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like having a Donovan up there. Oh, yeah. There you go. I'm going to have two examples. So, so I was reading, I think, did I see somebody talking about incorporating novelists into it? And so will there be some nifty, if you like this, you'll like that kind of suggestion? We'd have to purchase the novelist product, okay. uh, which we can certainly look at. I would love that. Well, and I also noticed at the top one of the tabs was databases. Is that going to be group specific again, or how um, that works? I am not real clear on on the database. Okay. My understanding is, is that that is a federated database search for your databases. Um, whether it works any better than it did in Aqua Browser, we would have to find out. Okay. Does Novelist have a consortial purchase? And then I think I, I am I remembering right that in their stuff they kept talking about the rooms, and I didn't get that. <laughs> yeah, rooms is another thing that we're still trying to get our heads around. Um, rooms is just a way of rooms is a way of grouping content together on a topic. So that can be books, websites, documents. But I haven't found a library yet that seems to really be using it a whole lot. Um, there is a chapter about it in the um, administration documentation, which I just got to actually. I was I've been skimming through that, so I'm still trying to get my heads around rooms and what that does. But nobody really seems to be using it a That's whole actually, lot. It kind of expands the catalog to be more of a website, right? So you can have like database stuff up there, some articles up there, or you can have a different access to the catalog, you can have a children's room, and when you search for the children's room, you can restrict it so it doesn't show certain items, like if you won't be able to find it, you should bring it. search for the children's room. So Depending then, upon it, like eye type, or how does that? I can't remember how they said that one works. But then you can also do that with profiles. But you can also do that with profiles as well. This, this library has got three library profiles. One is the regular catalog, and then there's one for kids and one for teens, which is basically the catalog with some different skins on it and some restrictions on, on what is getting searched. But you can see it's still the same basic catalog. It's just got different resources. Now off to the right there is the database. Is that how they've chosen to set those up with tumble books? And yeah, that they've okay. chosen to fill their sidebar with that. So you, yeah, you, yeah you can pretty much put any link, any graphic, okay. any text in the sidebars that you choose. Well, that would be great. Are we going to get to do this with our own, or is it, I mean, like, if each one is individual? To start with, we'll probably be populating that. Okay. One of the questions we have is how far we can go with that. Um, 
I've looked a little bit at the software that's used to do this, and it's very similar to the uh, software you would use to administer a WordPress site. That's what it looks like. So if you're comfortable with that, you're probably comfortable with this. Um, we'll need to figure out the details of how do we train you, how do we make sure that that things work and all that. Mm -hmm. So that's still a little bit ahead of where we are. So. Okay, is there any other questions? I don't want to hold people longer than necessary. Nope. Yeah, the whole, um, the uh, more information link, link or the, the pop-up window isn't looking real good on this laptop when I try to project it, so um, that's probably something we didn't really get to see very well today, but hopefully you got some idea of what it looks like. And the one-click audio down or e-book downloading part, that? That comes with the ERC product which is scheduled to be released, they're saying, first quarter of this year, calendar year. So, so it's coming soon. If, if they meet their target, it will be available for when we bring it up in April. If they don't meet their target, then it won't be. But we did buy that product along with Enterprise. So our intention is to offer it as soon as they have it available. But it's very cool. What are you most excited about? Um, me personally, I'm just most excited about having something that integrates a little better with Horizon. That that's not going to require quite so much work to to work with Horizon, and hopefully is going somewhere and is not just a stale dead end platform. I'm also really looking forward to being able to call one company for Horizon and enterprise support, and hopefully they'll actually be able to talk to each other. Um, the whole um, non-seamless nature of what we have now is starting to get to be a drag. So that's kind of what I'm looking forward to. And just having some more options. Any other comments or questions regarding what we've seen or wanting to see anything else? Or? Mm -hmm. Anderson, my account. I do need to log in. Well, I have a login for that. Okay, so then um, I suggest we move on then to rescheduling. And if, if there's no other listed, is there another? Other. Okay, um, then let's move on to rescheduling the March 2013 meeting. Rescheduling, Tyler. Okay, um, I believe this happened last year as well, though I can't say for sure that was on the committee at this time. But our March meeting is going to occur at the same time as the Library Technology Conference up in the city. So we need to find a different time for it. Because I know, for example, my presentation is right about now in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, can I ask the question of the uh, Selco, I guess, more Selco staff? With Enterprise, would we be better off moving ahead or behind the currently scheduled date? as far as finding out information regarding the matter. Maybe it doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't really matter. No, it's either the 21st or the 28th of March. It's currently scheduled on the 21st. Right. So we could do so we the, 20, uh, the 14th or the 28th? It would be better. I'm going the 14th as well for Kasugi. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's bad. Um, well, I'll have a name written down on the 28th. Oh, no, that's Holy Week. What's that? That's Holy Week. Holy Week is Monday, Thursday. Um, Cersei Dynix is hoping to start doing whatever theme customizations we ask for on March 13th, which is a Wednesday. So I <coughs> expect that to take about a week, probably. So meeting during the week of the 25th would give us um, a better shot at seeing what they come up with. Ooh. I guess I would I would vote that we look at doing it after because I think that's an important that would give us a better idea as a committee yeah. whether we're going to need a committee as well. I would guess. I think so. I think so. Does anybody have any objections to looking at March 25th then, Thursday, March 25th? Or March 25th, Monday. Excuse me. Monday, Thursday, perhaps we should do the Wednesday. Monday, Thursday. Is it? Thursday. That's a Thursday. Oh, God. I was thinking it was, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You said that and it just didn't click. 
Yes. How, how does Wednesday look for people? Because of the people out here, so we do a little... We can do a doodle poll? Yeah. Okay. Who's not here other than Mary Kay? Yeah, she, had, she, had, she sent a comment saying she had to go. Um, we're missing our technology policy committee, Mary Kay and Renita. I'd say if we have the majority of people here, we could. Yeah. Because I, I, otherwise, you get into this. Well, I can't do this, and I just. Then everybody starts getting. Let's just. And since it's two it. months out, if it's really, if we pick a day, that yeah. might be enough time for people to change. The I would think so. Okay. Yeah. So we would look at March twenty four. Wednesday, March twenty seven. Why do I have it? It's going to come in on a Sunday. Surely, Molly. Okay. Keep this cat. Okay. Yeah. What day am I looking at? March 27th. Okay, so let's um, set it up as our next meeting as March 27th. I think this is just an action item that I need to vote for. Or? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> um, any other discussion? Uh, oh, first I need a motion to make it that, I guess. I'll, I'll move that. Okay. Are we maintaining the time, 3 5? Yeah, sure. Yes. Don't want to change too much. Okay. Okay, Brad, second, any discussion? All right, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, so our March ILS technology meeting will be um, March 27th on a Wednesday, making accommodations for Thursday. That's so good because I might have to drive to Lyme, to Bartonville, Illinois on the 21st. My freshman niece has got the lead in the music. Oh, oh, wow. Wow. Oh, 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 so if I have to be there for a Friday night Friday performance, I might have to drive to Illinois on the twenty first. Or or okay. All right. <laughs> little little fact. You're welcome, Brad, anytime. Um announcements? Any other announcements? All right. Since we have covered the agenda, we do not need to be dismissed. We are adjourned. I'll, uh, I'll email out to this group some links to some of these catalogs. Okay. That'd be great. That'd be great. Oh, this is actually. Oh, yeah. That's what you really want. You have the great.